Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at genetic drift, um, specifically examples of genetic bottlenecks and the founder effect. So first of all I want to be clear about the difference between genetic drift and natural selection. Both of them um, are ways in which the allele frequencies in a population can change. If we start off with natural selection though, here is our gene pool. Um, let's say that these are insects and we're looking at the gene for the colour of the insects. Now just to keep it simple, I'm only looking at homozygous individuals. So we've got homozygous dominant individuals and they um, have got a frequency of 0 0.5 and there are also um, alleles for the recessive allele Q which is also 0 0.5. So there's 50% of each allele in our population. Now the dominant allele gives the insects a green colour and the recessive allele gives the insects a yellow colour. Now in the example of natural selection the change in allele frequencies is due to a selection pressure and in this example we're looking at a predator and this predator is able to spot the yellow individuals more easily because they are not as well camouflaged. As a result the green individuals are more likely to survive and reproduce and pass on the dominant allele to the next generation. So if we look several generations down the road we're going to see a change in the allele frequencies and because the dominant allele was more likely to be passed on to the next generation we now see that our frequency for the dominant allele has increased and it's now 0 0.7 and the frequency for the recessive allele has decreased. So we've had a change in allele frequencies. This change is not random. The change is a direct result of our selection pressure. Um, and in this example, um, it's directional. Okay, so this is an example of directional natural selection. Genetic drift is different. Genetic drift is also um, a change in allele frequencies, but it is random. So let's have a look at um, how that might work. So we'll start off with our same uh, gene pool over here for our insects, our green and yellow insects. Genetic drift occurs when a random event kills off um, a proportion of the population randomly. So that could be some sort of natural disaster, maybe there's a fire, maybe there's an earthquake. All of these individuals are killed. Therefore they're not able to reproduce and pass on their alleles. And what you can see in this very simplified version is that we've now got more of our um, homozygous recessive individuals than we did as a proportion in our original population. So if these individuals are now the ones that are able to survive, uh, that survive and they're able to reproduce, over several generations again we could see a change in our allele frequencies and what we would probably see in this situation despite the fact that there's still a predator there we're going to see possibly um, a decrease in our um, the frequency of our dominant allele and an increase in the frequency of our recessive allele because of this initial um, genetic drift event. So there's been a change in the allele frequencies, it's random, it's nothing to do with selection pressure. Okay, so genetic bottlenecks are one example of um, of, of when genetic drift can occur. So here is our gene pool and I'm just using different colours to represent different alleles in that population. Um, we're not interested here in whether the um, alleles are dominant, recessive, it's just about the fact that we've got some diversity in the gene pool in terms of different alleles. And if we look at the allele frequencies then um, I've just kept them equal just for this example. We can see that there's a frequency of 0 0.2 for each of the uh, different alleles represented by the different colours in our gene pool. So a genetic bottleneck occurs when there is a sudden um, decrease in the population size, where the population decreases quite significantly. So this could be for the same reasons as the, our general genetic drift example, as, as I mentioned before. So it could be a fire, it could be a natural disaster. Genetic bottlenecks have happened in animal populations in the past as a result of human um, hunting. And what happens is that a large proportion of the population are killed. So you can see here that um, the majority of these alleles now belonging to individuals have been killed and we are left only with a very small 
number of individuals. So each of the colours represents alleles, but it also represents an individual. So this is the gene pool that we now have. And this gene pool, as you can see, um, has a much lower diversity of alleles than it did to begin with. There is no green allele, there is no yellow allele. So not only have we got reduced genetic, uh, so not only have the allele frequencies changed, but we have actually lost alleles. So there's been a decrease in the genetic diversity of this population. And if this now very reduced populations, uh, population is able to reproduce over many generations, then what we would see is a gene pool, which might look something like this. So if we looked at alle allele frequencies here, this is what we see. And again, the, the green allele and the yellow allele have completely disappeared from the population. So we have got a change in allele frequencies, but we have also got a decrease in genetic diversity. So this happens in genetic bottlenecks um, a lot where you see a big decrease in the population size. If you just have general genetic drift, then you might see a change in allele frequencies. Um, an allele might increase um, from one generation to the next, then that same allele might decrease in frequency. It can fluctuate up and down. But in the example I've just shown here, it's not just a case of fluctuating allele frequencies. As I've said, the important thing is we've actually lost alleles. And once the alleles have been lost from a population, they can't suddenly appear again unless the same mutation occurs or unless there can be um, immigration from another neighbouring population which has, where an individual has that allele. Okay, so the founder effect is a similar sort of idea. Here's our population. Um, and in this example, what the, re the, the reason that there's a change in allele frequencies is because some individuals actually leave the population and they move somewhere else and they are the founders of a new population. So this is usually by chance. So for example, let's say that these are um, some sort of insect. It's possible that some of them end up um, being uh, carried away maybe on some sort of a wooden raft in the sea and they end up colonizing an island well away from the original population. So these individuals here are now the founders of a new population. And because founding populations are usually very small, they're not going to have the same genetic diversity as the original population. So here we've only got yellow and green alleles. We haven't got any of the red, the purple or the blue. So we've got a decreased genetic diversity in our founding population compared to our original population. And again, if we um, were to wait for them for several generations, that population is then going to be very different to the original population. So the founder effect often occurs when new islands um, are colonised for the first time. And it has a lot of implications in terms of um, the development of new species that might take place um, after the founding population has arrived on a new island. It also has implications in terms of the ability of that new population to have the adaptations that are needed and to be able to deal with changes in the environment. But that's something that we can look at in detail another time. So the founder effect causes changes in allele frequencies and you end up with a population which is very different in terms of the um, allele frequency and the genetic diversity to the original population and will not be representative of that original population. Okay, that's all. Thank you.